Vision Forward's In Focus team presents. Hi, this is Luke Scriven here at Vision Forward. Welcome back to another In Focus Deep Dive. In today's deep dive, we're going to be taking a look at some vision accessibility options built into Apple Mac computers. In order to get to these options, first of all, we're going to go down to the taskbar at the bottom of the screen, and we're going to find system preferences. And this is a, uh, you can, the picture is a square with a circular cogwheel inside. Let's go ahead and click on that to open it. In the window which opens, we're going to find accessibility. And this is a blue circle with a white person inside. And let's click on that. And there we have the accessibility window. And in here we can find all sorts of good things. Over on the left, it has the different uh, kind of sections. And uh, the vision section starts off with voiceover. Now, voiceover is a screen reader which reads aloud what's on the computer, primarily designed for people who are blind rather than people who are low vision. If I go ahead and check the enable voiceover box, we'll be able to hear uh, what that sounds like. Welcome to voiceover. Voiceover speaks descriptions of items on the screen and can be used to control the computer using only your keyboard. If you already know how to use voiceover, press the V key now. If you want to learn how to use voiceover, press the space bar now. And there we go. So we heard the voice, which sounds very good. And we can also do tutorials within here to learn how to use voiceover. For the moment, I'm just going to go ahead and cancel out of here. Uh, but that's where we would go if we wanted to turn on voiceover. Let's look at our next option over on the left hand side. Now this is our zoom feature. And under the zoom feature here, we have a number of different options. Our first option is to use keyboard shortcuts to zoom. And so we can toggle zoom on or off by using option command and eight. We can zoom in by using option command and equals, and we can zoom out by using option command and minus. If you want to be able to use those keyboard shortcuts, you can simply check the checkbox here. The next checkbox allows us to use scroll gestures along with a modifier key to zoom and we're able to choose which modifier key and also the style of zoom. So at the moment my modifier key is control so if I hold down control and I'm using a uh, laptop so rather than using the scroll wheel I'm going to use two fingers on the touchpad while holding control and push my two fingers upward and now I've turned on the zoom and I have it on picture in picture zoom at the moment and picture in picture zoom is basically like holding a magnifying glass up to the screen and it moves around with the mouse. Let's change that to full screen zoom. And now everything on the screen is zoomed. And in order to pan around, I can just move my mouse from left to right and up and down. I think I'm gonna leave it at that zoom for the moment. The next option that we have is enable hover text. And hover text means that whenever our mouse is on top of something, if we hold down command, then it will actually bring up the thing that our mouse is on top of in extra large print. So anywhere that my mouse is, I will be able to see in extra large print just underneath the mouse pointer. This is a really cool feature. I like it a lot. I'm going to leave that enabled. And finally, at the bottom, we have enable touch bar zoom. That's for if you have one of the modern computers with the touch bars. Let's go back over to the left now to display. And under here we have a number of different options. In the first tab is the display options. We have an invert colors. If we click on that, then all the colors will be inverted. Click it again, they'll go back to normal. That's really good for obviously uh, if you want to read uh, like a document and you're finding that all the white light is quite glary, you can invert the colors so that the document is black and the text is white and it might make it easier to see. We have reduce motion here and increase contrast, reduce transparency. Let's just take a look at in increase contrast here. It will actually put dark lines around things to make them more contrasty. And it automatically turns on reduce transparency. So things which uh, were transparent now become more solid color again to increase the contrast. Let's leave that on, I quite like that. Uh, differentiate without color, I'm not exactly sure what that does. And then at the bottom, we have a slider to increase or decrease the display contrast in general. 
and we can really crank it up there. But uh, let's yeah, let's have it up a little bit. There we go. We're going to raise that a little bit. So now the the contrast uh, is extremely good right at the moment, and obviously that can increase our ability to see things. Our next tab here is the cursor. We can uh, enlarge the cursor or the mouse pointer and make it larger. So I'm going to make this larger and leave it like this now. And we can also check this checkbox to shake the pattern mouse pointer to locate. So if we move the mouse pointer quickly from side to side, it will temporarily grow in size to help us locate it. Um, and again, that's a really cool feature. So no reason not to leave that turned on. And our final tab is color filters, and in here we're able to change various color filters. This is more for people um, with uh, color blindness, and so we'll leave that for the moment. Let's go back over to our options on the left here. Here we have speech. Now there are certain um, things, certain tools that we can use as low vision users, um, apart from narrator, which will allow us to have things read aloud to us and they can be very helpful. The first drop down box here we have is which voice we want to be spoken, we want the computer to speak with, and uh, by default we have Alex. Most people recognize me by my voice. So that's what he sounds like. Let's try another one, we'll try Fred here. I sure like being inside this fancy computer. So he's more like a Stephen Hawking's kind of voice, and then we'll choose a Victoria. Isn't it nice to have a computer that will talk to you? And finally, we'll try Samantha here. Hello, my name is Samantha. I am an American English voice. Well, let's just try Siri female as well. Why not? Siri. Hello, my name is Siri. I am an American English voice. So some really good sounding voices there. I'm partial to Alex myself, so I'm going to put it back to Alex. And of course, underneath, we can also change the speaking rates. So let me crank it up to the fastest here. We'll see what that sounds like. Most people recognize me by my voice. And we'll do it on the slowest here. Most people recognize me by my voice. Oh, I, I think I'll stick to the normal, so we'll put that slider in the middle. The next thing, we have a checkbox to announce alerts, um, which is really cool. Whenever we get notifications, then they will be announced to us so that we know that those um, have popped up. So that's uh, worth checking, I think. And next we have speak selecting text. <clears throat> And uh, by default, we can do this with option and escape. So this is, again, a really nice feature. What we can do, let's see if I can do it here. No, I can't. But um, if we have a document, for example, uh, or an email or something like that, and there is some text in it, if we just highlight the text and then press option and escape, it will be read aloud to us. So you can imagine how useful that is. Um, you're trying to read a document. You can just have it read aloud. If you want to read an email, you can just have it read aloud. You want to um, read part of a web page, you can just have it read aloud. All you have to do is highlight the text and then press option and escape together. Now you can actually change uh, that key command by uh, pressing on the change key button. So it doesn't have to be option and escape. That's just what the default is. And we also have a speak items under pointer. So wherever our mouse is, we can have the thing that it's currently on top of spoken aloud to us. Speak Let's check that. group. At the moment, I've got it on basically instantaneous. So as soon as I'm, my mouse is on top of something, it will be read to me. Show accessibility status in menu bar. Un group. Like so. Now we can change how quickly the uh, text is read. So it doesn't have to be read instantly as the pointer is on top of it. If we move the slider to the right, we can change 1 .0 the length. second slider. So now it would be one second before um, the text is read, and we can make that even longer if we want to. We can also change in the drop down list um, whether this happens when we're zoomed or all the time. At the moment, I have only when zoomed, and so things will only be spoken uh, if I'm currently zoomed in. And that's a nice little feature. Let's go back over to the left again to our final vision option here. And this is for audio descriptions. And so we can um, have a spoken description of what's happening in a video uh, when this box is checked. Now this won't work with all videos, so it will only work when this feature is available. Uh, but audio description is really good because it's basically a narrator telling you what's happening on the screen. And so obviously in, uh, in movies and videos and things, then that can be very useful. Well, thank you very much for watching this video on the accessibility options built into Mac OS for people with uh, vision impairments. I hope it was useful. And uh, of course, if you have any questions about it, you can get in touch with us. 
you can call us at 414-615-0103. You can email infocus at vision-forward.org or you can visit our website vision-forward.org. And if you did like the video, please like and subscribe. It really helps our channel. And we do release new videos every Friday, so keep tuned to those. And we will see you in the next video.